As part of Montana's Severe Weather Awareness Week, we thought we'd go back and take a look at some of the major events that have happened in Montana's history. This video is brought to you by the National Weather Service offices in Billings, Glasgow, Great Falls, and Missoula. Tornadoes, that's the one many people think about. We average about nine tornadoes a year in Montana. Some years we don't have many. Other years we seem to get quite a few. 2010 was a big tornado year across the state. Tornadoes are rated based on the kind of damage that they do. The scale was redone in recent years, but it's still the Fujita scale that we use or the enhanced Fujita scale. So you can see we have F3 tornadoes. There's been six of them in our history. The earliest recorded in 1923 in Marr County, and the latest was most recently in 2010 in Sheridan County. In our database, we have 41 reported F2 tornadoes, 63 F1, and 212 F0 tornadoes. So the majority of our tornadoes have not caused any damage, but we do have a lot of rural open area as well. Sadly, we have had tornado deaths across the state. Mineral County on June 10, 1923 had two people killed with an F1 rated tornado and Sheridan County on July 26th of 2010 had an F3 tornado that killed two people. Roosevelt, Weibo, and Macomb counties each have had one fatality as well. The big one in most recent memory for a lot of people was the F3 tornado that hit in western Sheridan County on July 26th of 2010. Sadly, two people were killed, a middle-aged man and a 10-year-old boy. The grandmother was also seriously injured. This tornado caused about $300,000 in damage. The path length was 18 miles long, and at its widest point, it was a half mile wide. They even found some letters and debris from this tornado as far as Crosby, North Dakota, which is 70 miles east-northeast of where the tornado path hit this ranch. Another 2010 tornado that was really big and obvious for a lot of people to see was the Billings F2 tornado on June 10th, 2010. It occurred about the start of rush hour and came across where the Metro Park and Rimrock Auto Arena are at. Quite a few businesses were damaged and the Metro was shut down for many, many months before they could get it fixed and put back together. Debris from this tornado was found a mile away and it caused over $30 million in damage. Another one a little farther back in time was August 14th of 1999 when Lewistown was hit with an F2 tornado. $4 million in damage with over 150 homes damaged, 20 of them with major damage. There were three minor injuries and the tornado traveled for five miles and was up to 100 yards wide. Moving on to hail. The largest reports in the state are between five and six inches. They're not really cataloged very well, but they were in Rosebud in County in 1965 and Powder River County in 1971. We do have quite a few four and a half inch or softball size hail reports. And as you can see, looking at the list there, most of them are east of the Continental Divide where we get more moisture and we get more severe thunderstorms. They can be a little bit more intense east of the mountains. The photo on the left shows a hailstorm that hit Broadus, Montana on July 18, 2001 with that softball size hail. Tons of damage, lots of homes were damaged, windows busted out, and vehicles had quite a bit of damage as well. Another thing thunderstorms bring to us is some pretty severe winds. This is looking at just the 100 mile an hour plus report since 2000. McCone and Dawson County had a serious storm on July 20th of 2001 that caused almost two and a half million dollars in damage. You can see the grain elevators in circle were completely crushed in. The large tension electrical power lines from the Western Area Power Administration, almost 20 of these were collapsed and bent over. And you can see here a large piece of wood that went through a window and the hull of this pickup truck as 113 mile an hour winds smashed through circle. 
Again, lots and lots of reports of winds that are over 100 miles an hour and quite a bit of damage in Montana from it as well. How about hail and wind? This storm that occurred June 16th of 2007 formed east of Glacier National Park earlier in the morning, traveled north of the High Line and north of Haver before kind of taking a right turn and going down the High Line from Malta to Glasgow and eventually ending just west of Sydney. The hail swath that we could see on satellite right through here, it actually extends off this image, was 285 miles long, one of the longest ones ever seen in the U.S. At the widest point, it was 12 miles wide of damage, $30 million in building and crop loss. Winds were up to 92 miles an hour with hail up to 3 inches in size. And this incredible storm right here also produced four to seven inches of rainfall that caused some significant flash flooding and damage on Antelope Creek. So again, this storm was around for over 10 hours as it crossed from west of, or east of Glacier National Park almost to the North Dakota border. On July 20th, 1997, Libby had a microburst that came through. Winds were estimated of at least 81 miles an hour, but up to 114 miles an hour as well. Two injuries occurred. Many, many trees snapped or uprooted, power poles damaged, 20 homes with major damage and 70 with minor, and again, a lot of vehicles were damaged as well. This storm did at least a million and a half dollars in damage from just four insurance companies that provided data. Another threat that we have with thunderstorms is flash flooding in the summertime. From debris flow floods to heavy rainfall occurring to dams breaking, Montana's had its share of all of it. The most recent big flash flood event occurred in May and June of 2011, and that was where Roundup had significant rainfall for several weeks and then a good thunderstorm that occurred producing a huge amount of rainfall. The pictures on the left show the Muscle Shell River and the valley where it flooded in Roundup and the bottom left is the Busy Bee Cafe right there off the highway that many people drive by. And on June 2011 Cherry Creek to the west of Glasgow had a significant flash flood as well and a lot of water came through and in both of these areas swift water rescues had to be done. But we can go as far back, 1938, we had nine deaths south of Haver, we had rail lines washed out and the Milk River flooding as this heavy rainfall over the few days prior as well as the actual date of June 23rd occurred. And the debris flow flooding. With all the wildfires in the state, a lot of our soils become hydrophobic and they can't absorb the water from thunderstorms or rainfall events. So flash flooding becomes a big issue as well in the western part of the state. This one here occurred in southern Ravalli County on July 21st of 2001. Sadly, Montana's deadliest event was also a flash flood. It occurred June 19, 1938 on Custer Creek, which is about halfway between Mile City and Terry, just off the Yellowstone River. About 50 people were killed with over 75 injured when the train started to cross a bridge that had been impacted by some significant flash flooding along the creek. The train caused the bridge to collapse and all of the cars went down into the water. There was a 30 foot wall of water they later found that had gone through that small creek that eventually flowed into the Yellowstone River. This is one of the worst train accidents in U.S. history but it is the worst one in Montana history as well. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to this presentation and we hope that in the future you share your photos with us. One of the best ways to do that is to post them to the Facebook pages for one of the weather service offices in the state or to our Twitter accounts. Thank you for your time.